Leeds has been a market town since 1207, with traders coming here to ply their wares. And this is Kirkgate Market, winner of Britain's favourite market 2016 and again for 2017. Now it attracts a staggering 10 million visitors a year and its 800 stores give independent retailers a chance to compete against the big boys. It was opened as an open air market in 1822 and then covered bits were added later on in the 19th century as more traders began to move here from nearby Brigitte. When plans were first hatched for a covered market on this site, the designs were modelled on Sir Joseph Paxton's Crystal Palace in London's Hyde Park. Now that had the biggest area of glass ever seen on a building. And seven years later when construction started, a truly magnificent structure was built on this site. The hall was constructed from iron and was covered in glass with 44 shops on the outside, mainly butchers and fishmongers, and with 35 inside offering fruit and vegetables, it immediately became the biggest covered market in Europe, a title the market still holds to this day. At night, 200 gaslights would illuminate the market hall, and that must have been quite something to behold. Then, in 1875, more land was purchased to expand the market, and a further 90 stores were added. In 1894, a row was opened specially for fishmongers in a particularly cool part of the market. And that was followed by a meat market. And then, in a display of great confidence, a domed glazed roof was added to protect shoppers from the elements. In 1884, one of the most famous retail businesses in the world was founded here in Leeds Market. Michael Marx, an immigrant from Poland joined forces with a local man called Thomas Spencer. Marx used to work for John Barron. He's the guy who gave the city of Leeds the elaborate drinking fountain that stands in Round Hay Park to this day. Now an associate of Barron's called Isaac Dewhurst, who was a true business angel by all accounts, lent Michael Marx five pounds to found his original Penny Bazaar here in the market, helped him to run the business and later introduced him to Spencer. The store became hugely successful and expanded around the north of England. One of their best-selling lines was broken Kit Kats, rejects from the nearby Roundtree's factory in York. In fact, so popular were the broken Kit Kats that Roundtree's had to employ a line of women to deliberately break the chocolates in order to keep up with the demand from M&S. The company went on to expand into 40 countries and last year turned over in excess of 10 billion pounds. Not bad for a company founded with one market stall right here in Leeds Market. In 2013, Marks and Spencers opened this store in the market to celebrate their heritage. As well as being the original home of Marks and Spencer, it now includes a Jamie Oliver Ministry of Food offering courses on how to cook using all of the fresh produce available here in the market. In 1893, fire ripped through the market and did an awful lot of damage. Now, although the market stayed open, a decision had been taken to demolish it. And at the same time, plans were afoot to widen Vicar Lane. So the council let a competition to commission designs for a new market hall, including this grand entrance here. The new market was opened in 1904 with 18 shops along the front, an open area inside filled with stalls, small shops around the outside and an upper storey including a hotel, a restaurant and various other rooms for playing billiards and for drinking coffee in. The cost was £116,750, about £13 million in today's money. World War II saw a shortage of goods and so the resource of the market became even more important. 
and despite bombing raids, it hardly ever closed. In fact, it expanded with the addition of a butcher's row and an open market too. In 1975, just two weeks before Christmas, fire completely destroyed two thirds of the market. The roof caved in and over a hundred firefighters attended the scene. Now with typical Yorkshire grit, parts of the market were reopened just three days later and then new halls were added in 1976 and in 1981. By the mid-1980s, parts of the market were looking pretty old and tired, and the council planned a major refurbishment. Now, there were objections from local residents, from the Market Traders Association, and also from the Civic Trust, but Leeds City Council ploughed on regardless. However, the compulsory purchase order they needed was refused by the Secretary of State for the Environment, and the whole project went back to the drawing board. Works were finally approved in 1991 with the refurbishment more in keeping with the original designs and the market was upgraded from its Grade 2 listed building status to the Grade 1 listed building status it holds today. The outdoor market was redeveloped in 1996 and you can get anything here from carpets to clothes to second-hand tools to fruit and veg. At the same time that the new market was built, a bus station opened and also a multi-storey car park which was rebuilt as part of the Victoria Gate development here behind me. The latest part in the evolution of Leeds Market is this £13 million revamp to create a street food and activity area. And with such luminaries as Manjit's Kitchen and the Zamzam Bakery having a permanent home here, it certainly looks to be giving Trinity Kitchen a run for its money. Leeds Market's had its fair share of ups and downs, but it remains one of the most interesting shopping destinations in Leeds, particularly as the city centre's filling up with the big brands with their well-heeled stores. It's been here for 160 years, and with all the recent investment, looks set to be here for 160 more. This is Jonathan Strait for The Lowdown.